Okay, adjusting my... Okay. So, as I said on Twitter, I was going to do the Purple Rain review on Monday, and I switched my cover to Friday, as you can clearly tell by the channel's chronology. So, yes, this week I am going to do an album review and a movie review of The Mask, so let's talk about the album, which is Purple Rain, which is kind of a hell of a jump to go from a recently released Taylor Swift album to an 80s gem. And this movie came out before the movie Purple Rain came out. It was, it was like back-to-back -back months in the summer, and it, it was basically Prince Mania. You know, it, it, it was really... It, it was a great time to be a Prince fan. Because he had started in 1977 at the age of 19, released his debut album, I believe, in 78, and his career just continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger as the albums continued. And this album, I, I think it's one of those pieces of art where I think every great artist has this where they have that one album. They may have a great career, but they have that one album that was commercially amazing, artistically ambitious, and it knocked it out of the park on both aspects. And there, there are other albums I could think of that are just as iconic as Purple Rain. Um, Slippery When Wet from Bon Jovi, Born to Run from Bruce Springsteen. I mean, guys, look, I'm sorry. I'm a Springsteen fan. I had to mention it. Um, and also uh, Thriller and from Michael Jackson. I mean, you, you, could you could probably also throw in Bad from 1987 in there. And Abbey Road. There's a lot of iconic albums out there in the history of rock and roll. Although I would say Purple Rain is more pop rock by comparison. It, it's kind of a, it, it's a mix of a lot of things. Um, this is really when Prince is at the height of his powers. And the album... Starts off with a great song, and it ends on a masterpiece. With that being, Let's Go Crazy being the beginning, and Purple Rain being the climactic title track. Um, what I can really say is that, is, this is where the 80s aesthetic really started to creep in with the synth guitars, the synth keyboard, some of the different styles of vocals. Um, the crazy aggressive guitar playing, um, and, and there there's some parts where Prince does some hard rock where he's screeching at the top of his lungs in the final notes, like uh, "Darling Nikki" and "When Doves Cry" are a great example of this. Um, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what to say about this album that hasn't already been said to death, but I I think the real standout albums, I mean. The real standout songs on this album are, well, I already mentioned um, When Doves Cry, Let's Go Crazy, and Purple Rain. Darling Nikki was also a pretty fairly controversial song when it came out, and yeah, that, that, that's a whole other video for a whole other day. But I feel like all the songs on this album, it they, they each tell a good story or at least have a very strong punch to it that makes them all all memorable, all unique, and you're never going to forget them, you know? I, I, I think um, Pr Prince was already building an impressive catalog, and Purple Rain was a tour de force. And you could really tell, not only with the production of his album, but with the production of his movie, Prince really wanted to create, as I said before, his magnum opus. I, to me, I feel like his intent with this album was to create the greatest album you've ever heard. So you could just yourself afterwards because nothing would get better than that. Um, yeah, I really hope no one sees... Uh, if you're going to watch the video and you notice the gun to my head gesture, I'm... I'm not trying to do anything. Anyway, moving on. Um, so I think I think what I could there, there really isn't a whole lot to say, as I said before. Um, 
if I was to make a complaint, well, I, I mean, actually, I, as a companion piece of the movie, this is a far superior piece of work. And it's not just a great 80s album, it's one of the best albums in general. So I would say if you haven't heard it, you should definitely check it out. There's a lot of great stuff. There's a lot of great 80s pop and rock and roll. And you're probably going to get one of the most soul-changing, inspiring songs at the end of this album. So it wasn't really much of a review to say because I couldn't think of much original thoughts or much stuff that wasn't super cliched. So I'll uh, do my review of The Mask on Friday, and then next Monday I'll get back to doing my guitar work. See ya!